In 1996, Nintendo released a game that would change video games forever. It's me, Mario! Super Mario 64 was a landmark achievement. Many felt that 2D Mario was gaming perfection, and that somehow the translation to 3D would dilute the experience. But the end result redefined the platforming genre and gave away to many 3D games that came after it. Oh, and it sold a cool 11 million copies. It showed off what the Nintendo 64 could do, complete with colourful 3D graphics that were fully texture mapped and filtered, exceptional audio, and of course, analogue controls. It wasn't perfect. The game was criticised for its camera, which took some getting used to, but with the ability to adjust perspective, it certainly wasn't a major issue. And over 20 years later, Super Mario 64 still holds up. It's a masterpiece and a true killer app for the Nintendo 64. Mario 64 was first playable in emulation as early as 1999 and for years people have been interested in dissecting the game to learn more of its secrets. One particular method involved the generation of source code for the entire game. In the middle of 2019, the source code for Super Mario 64 was released onto the internet. However, this was not a leak of the official source code to the game. Rather, it was a decompilation project that was performed painstakingly over many, many months. For those that may not be familiar, with decompilation and reverse engineering tools like IDA Pro or even better, Ghidra, which is free and open source, it's actually possible to generate raw C code from the binary. The tools are that good. So let's take a quick pause. Why do we care about any of this? There was a recent video made by fellow YouTuber Matt KC, who made a very interesting discovery that Super Mario 64 could actually run faster with a simple one-line change to a file. I recommend checking out his video on this topic and I'll have a link in the description below. So before we get technical, let's see if any of this is actually true. This is running on real hardware with an EverDrive cartridge. The speed ups are very apparent on the level die die docks. And indeed, if we compare the patched optimized version to the unmodified original game, there is a performance increase. Doing some quick frame rate analysis shows this as well. This is pretty interesting. As you can see, the patched optimized version can run significantly faster, frequently hitting 30 frames per second. The unmodified original version is notorious for slowdown and lag on the die die docks level, and as you can see, it sometimes struggles to keep up, and it will bottom out at sometimes less than 20 frames per second. So this was all achieved by utilizing Ghidra, a decompilation and reverse engineering tool. If we provide Ghidra with a Mario 64 ROM, it will decompile the ROM successfully and generate raw C code. However, the function names will be generic, which aren't that useful because there is no context. So the next step from here is to update the code to understand what it's actually doing. The Mario 64 decompilation project is the work of many, many months of research and development. But in the end, the project is capable of generating a Mario 64 ROM file that exactly matches byte for byte the US version of the game. That's pretty impressive. There's never any guarantee of that, but it shows how good decompilation techniques have become. So let's go back to that one line change. It was performed in a file that was known as a makefile. This is a file which contains a list of instructions to tell the MIPS C compiler how to build the ROM. It also contains information about the optimization settings that it should apply when building a release candidate for the game. Recall that the original US Mario 64 ROM matches the decompilations project ROM byte for byte based on the makefile. So as it turns out, we can see that there was no optimization flag enabled before the game went retail. So this is the part that seems very strange. Nintendo for some reason decided to release Mario 64 in the USA without any optimization at all. What this make file is telling us is that the European version is running an optimization known as O2, while the North American version is not running optimization at all. In fact, minus G means to generate debug output. So is Super Mario 64 not optimized at all in the US version? That has been the source of the recent discussion point, that somehow Mario 64 fell through the cracks when it was being released in the USA without any optimization. And as soon as I heard about this story, I was immediately skeptical. Before we throw our hands up in the air and blame Nintendo for being lazy, let's do some digging and see if there's a logical explanation for all this. 
As someone who is a C programmer and has many years of C programming experience, this story really perked my interest because the initial takeaway is Nintendo somehow managed to omit the O2 optimization on Super Mario 64, but I think it's important to really deep dive and understand how optimization works on C compilers, as well as take a look at some of the development documents from Nintendo back in 1996. When you develop code in C, the compiler will do its best to optimize it for you, but there are some additional levels of optimization that you can also apply. They are O0 or no optimization. This is the equivalent of having the flag omitted. This option is not recommended except for debugging purposes. Next is O1. This is a basic optimization level. The compiler tends to produce smaller code. O2 is a step up from O1 and it's the recommended level of optimization in most instances. It will increase code performance quite nicely. Then there is O3, which is the highest level. It's aggressive and it's known to break code. Its usage is not recommended. However, the gains can be significant. So let's consider this piece of code here. It's a simple memcopy function that takes a source and copies it to a destination. It's not really important to understand the assembly language that it's generating on the right hand side, but notice that it's generating around 52 lines of assembly from the basic memcopied C function. If we specify that we want O2 as our optimization pattern, you can see that the assembly code is significantly reduced. In general terms, less assembly instructions means faster code. So it's 1996, Nintendo is about to launch the Nintendo 64 with Mario 64 in the US. And we're led to believe that somehow they forgot to add the O2 optimization flag to the US version of the game. Now the developer in me tells me that there is more to this story than meets the eye. So this is the programming guide and reference manual. If you were a developer from the Nintendo 64, you'd be quite familiar with this documentation. Pretty much all the information you need to code N64 games is here. Back in the early days, developers were using Silicon Graphics workstations and then later partner Nintendo 64 hardware development kits on PCs and writing code in C. Many developers came from the Super Nintendo where things were done using assembly language, so there was a bit of a learning curve here. C has some intricacies and pitfalls, particularly around typecasting, that can catch you out if you're not careful, and then adding optimizations into the mix can easily break code. Looking through the online documentation came up with some interesting bits of information. Nintendo themselves recommended that any non-debug code is compiled with the O2 optimization flag. In fact, looking at the samples that came with the SDK further proves that O2 should have been the target. So why was it omitted in Mario 64? Simply because Mario 64 was a launch title, development kit hardware was expensive, the tools and the SDK was not yet established, and there is strong evidence that points to compiler issues that were later patched. For example, one particular one that stands out is back-to-back -back floating point multiplication. That is, if you multiply two floating point numbers, then take the result of the first multiplication and then multiply that with another number, it could provide incorrect results. Now this may seem harmless, but incorrect math floating point values would likely affect geometry and textures. Attempting to track down and fix these types of bugs can take many, many hours to triage and resolve. Nintendo offered a software workaround and later patched it. During the development of Mario 64, it's likely that optimization was disabled so developers could be in control of this issue. There's also other interesting things. Looking at the SDK patch notes can reveal some additional information. This particular patch note was from late 1996. Essentially what it's saying is if O2 was enabled, any warning that the compiler would spit out is suppressed. In other words, if there's a chance that the compiler will generate bugs and inform the dev, they'll never see it. Again, something that was later addressed, but Mario 64 was a launch game and developers wanted full control over their code and not risk it. The main takeaway here is that Mario 64 was developed with early versions of the SDK that contained bugs. Dylan Cuthbert, who worked with Nintendo on the Super NES and Nintendo 64, also confirmed that O2 and even O3 introduced problems for developers that were not familiar with C compilers. There is one more interesting piece of information that I want to share with you guys about this story and that is it's easy to conclude that Nintendo did not optimize Mario 64 in the US. However, that is not entirely true. Although the O2 flag does help Super Mario 64, the gains aren't massive. 
The difference between debug and O2 normally is fairly significant. There's two things going on here. First, O2 won't help with the GPU, and second, and perhaps more importantly, the discovery that O2 was not enabled is not 100% accurate. In fact, you could say it's a little misleading. Most Nintendo 64 games that were developed would use a common library known as LibUltra, and developers of games would build common libraries that were shared across their titles. Mario 64 uses LibUltra and other libraries to handle math, audio, and additional calculations. If we go back to the make file we saw earlier but scroll down further, there are libraries that are also compiled into the game, but most of them have O2 and even O3 enabled. It means, while some of the source indeed isn't optimized, the libraries that work with the game well and truly are, and referencing these makes up a large part of the game. So how does a true debug or non-optimized Mario 64 run? Well, let's go ahead and disable optimization from every single source file in this code and see how well it performs now. As you can see on the intro screen on the left hand side is the debug version and there's already a few frames per second difference. It's a lot slower. The O2 and base versions run at around the same level of performance. So the O2 version isn't really any more optimized than the base version, only in select places. So in conclusion, Nintendo certainly did not forget to optimize Super Mario 64. They knew exactly what they were doing given the tools that they had to work with at the time. All things considered, the game turned out to be an absolute masterpiece and performed exceptionally well. Back in those days, we weren't as concerned about frame rates and lag as we are now. I really love to see these types of decompilation projects and one game that really stands out to me that could really use something like this would be Pilot Wings. Now, Pilot Wings was another game that had slowdowns. You know, you'd play through the game and then all of a sudden the, the game would basically halve its frame rate. So I'm not suggesting that this is a similar type of thing, but it could be something that would benefit from a decompilation and another look at the code to see if there's any modern techniques that can be applied in order to improve performance. And I think that type of project work or that type of you know discoveries are very interesting to me. So there's definitely more things there that I'm very excited to see and hopefully more decompilation project teams start to rally around and get more of these projects decompiled so we can start looking at them and, and really applying modern compilation techniques to some of the things that we're trying to do in order to increase performance. Well guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.